one sir we are live now Okay. So good evening, everybody, and welcome to this uh, fiery foot and ankle session of BOS Rising Star. Uh, to explain the concept and to welcome the judges, I'll invite President of Bombay Orthopedic Society, Dr. Sanjay Dar, sir. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Ashok, once again, and welcome everyone uh, for this uh, one more episode of Rising Star. This this time we are doing on foot and ankle. And today we have, I think, three uh, contestants for this session. And uh, uh, we have, uh, I think, two judges today. Uh, Dr. Pradeep Manoth, who is a well-known foot and ankle surgeon from Mumbai. And Dr. Abhishek Kinney, again, a very well-known foot and ankle surgeon from Mumbai. Besides that, we have Dr. Dirian Ganjawala, who, as always, is with us uh, in the session uh, with his expert. Uh, knowledge of presentations and besides orthopedics. So today we'll have, uh, I think so far only two candidates have joined, uh, Dr. Kulkit Bandi and Dr. Tinam Bansal. We have one more, Dr. Chandan, who is yet to join. So for the judges and for the students, I think students already know the uh, rules and regulations that it is going to be an eight minute uh, presentation followed by question answers, which the, your expert judges from foot and ankle and Dr. Dering Gandhiwala will ask. For the judges, it will be an eight minute presentation. I'm, I think Ashok has shared with you the table for the marking. It is all presentation plus the content as well as the literature review. So you are free to ask any questions to them then you are, and mark them accordingly. So that's uh, I will uh, take you back to Dr. Ashok, who will carry on the further. Thank you, sir. I'll invite Dr. Neeraj Bridgetanli, Secretary of BOS, to invite and introduce the contestants today. Yeah, thank you, Ashok. So today we have the Rising Star session on foot and ankle surgery. So there will be uh, three delegates who will be talking, and we hope that one of them becomes the Rising Star of BOS. So... The first speaker will be Dr. Sheenam Bansal. She is going to talk on surgical treatment of tarsal coalition, current techniques and outcomes. Second speaker is going to be Dr. Pulkit Bandi. He is going to talk on management of calcaneal fractures, review on surgical approaches. And the third speaker is going to be Dr. Chandan Naran, who is going to talk on actually stand and repair, a review of surgical approaches. With this, I welcome you all and uh, hand over back to Ashok to start the sessions. Thank you, Neeraj. And... So we kickstart the session today with uh, Dr. Sheenam Bansal. Uh, as per guidelines, you have eight minutes to complete your presentation and followed by question and answers. So you can start sharing your screen, Dr. Sheenam. Yes, sir. Sir, is my screen visible? Yes. Uh, okay. You can go full screen and then we can start. Yes. Sir, is it full screen? Yes. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for the opportunity uh, to present on surgical treatment of tarsal coalitions, current techniques and outcomes. Uh, specimens, coalitions can be identified from civilization samples worldwide. It is familial and it can also be associated with limb deficiencies. And it may also, it is due to the failure of mesenchymal differentiation or segmentation. Its incidence is 0.4 to 13%. Late plane x ray and internal oblique x ray and theater sign is, uh, can be seen in the coalitions. Variable morphology of tarsal coalition can be seen, which is osseous, fibrous. Eroded edges can be seen, which is uh, commonly neglected. Concurrent uh, coalitions can also be there, which can be diagnosed with the MRI. This paper showed 20% cases of concurrent uh, coalitions. This can be seen uh, on X-ray, we can see eroded edges. And on the MRI, MRI is showing fibrous coalition. C sign can be seen in the telocalcaneal coalition. Taylor and avicular decking can be seen due to the abnormal joint reaction forces due to coalition. 
these are the axial and saltsman view which can be seen uh, to fully visualize the hind foot indication of collision is section r pain stiffness or injury which makes the 24% of the total collisions there is no place for casting we resect the collision and obtain motion then uh, we can help it can help the to preserve other joints described techniques in the literature are arthrodesis collision resection and interpositioning with fat bone wax split FHL tendon and extensor digitorum brevis tendon and calcaneum lengthening osteotomy. In 1948, Harris and colleagues um, said about the triple arthrodesis was the most important treatment for persistently telocalcaneal coalitions, but resection for calcaneonavicular bars. In 1987, uh, Scranton and colleagues uh, said that telocalcaneal coalitions could be successfully resected if they are uh, less than half the width of subtalar joint surface, but it was data free conclusion. Then, uh, in 1994, Wilde and colleagues put forward the same thing, but with the uh, full evidence with the CT scan, they uh, put forward two things resection and triple arthrodesis. Res resection, if there is less than 50. This is if more than 50% surfaces involved. They said that uh, we can resect and uh, interpose, uh, we can do interpositioning with fat graph if there is ratio of surface area to surface area of, of posterior facet is less than 50%. There is no narrowing of posterior facet. Triple arthro, this is was recommended if there was narrowing of uh, posterior facet and there was a uh, hind foot valgus that was more than 16 degrees ratio of surface area of middle facet to surface area of posterior facet was more than 50%. In, uh, in 1998, uh, comfort and colleagues uh, uh, showed the results of collision resection with more than one third uh, total surface area involvement were unsatisfactory. 75% were unsatisfactory. And in 2009, uh, Scott Moore from San Diego told that uh, if defect is 25 to 30 millimeter deep, extensor digitorum previs reaches up to 64% only, and then a uh, 10 millimeter is unfilled. Uh, so unfilled, so we can put the uh, fat. And in 2012, uh, Mosca, uh, Mosca and colleagues uh, showed that for a resectable telocalcaneal coalition with normal hind foot alignment, we can resect the coalition for a resectable telocalcaneal coalition with hind foot valgus. We can perform concurrent or staged calcaneum lengthening osteotomy after six months or so. And for an unresectable telocalcaneal coalition with excessive hind foot valgus, we can perform calcaneal lengthening osteotomy alone. And we can do a gastronemius recession if indicated. Then in 2015, uh, this uh, Susan and colleagues gave the totally controversial results. They showed that half patient with telocalcaneal coalitions had a coalition with more than 50% involvement, but the, but the results differentiation were not significant between these two cases. So it was this paper was totally controversial with the other papers. So uh, then in uh, 2015, uh, Do Matthew Dobbs and colleagues showed that a surgical reconstruction for telocalcaneal coalition with severe hind foot valgus deformity have significant results and uh, has a very good AOFA score. They did the calcaneal sliding osteotomy and calcaneal neck lengthening and medial cuneiform osteotomy. Then uh, in 2022, um, this paper was uh, put forward. We showed that the arthroscop arthroscopic resection has success rate of 86% and of open resection uh, success rate is 80%. So um, they uh, put forward the arthroscopic resection technique. So future direction is uh, we can use live navigation with the portable CT scan. And uh, so we can treat complex coalitions very uh, efficiently. And uh, uh, their CT scan dose is also very less. Uh, thank you so much.
Thank you, Dr. Shinam. You finished in six and a half minutes. So over to judges for questions. First, Dr. Pradeep, you are around. If you can stop sharing. I think an excellent presentation. Um, a lot of data to, to actually go through it. And even us as foot and ankle, still we had to grasp with the slides of each. There was a lot of content on each slide. So very good. So question is, if you have a subtalar coalition, right? And a 14 or 15 year old. Oh, no, let's change that. If you have a subtalar coalition who comes at the age of 25 or 28, okay, with a hind foot valgus, how are you going to treat it? Are you going to resect it? Are you going to fuse it? Or what are you going to do? Because you, you presented both sides of the story. Somebody, Mahan, I think you said, you actually did not tell me the results. You said, yes, he was controversial. But what was the outcome of that paper? You didn't mention it on the slide, at least. I could not find it. Uh, sir, uh, they told the uh, results were significant with the uh, more valgus and uh, with the less valgus. So, but that is anyway, Mosca and even the previous papers had already showed that, correct? Yes, sir. So, there was nothing changed in that. But sir, they previous... spoke about the less than 50%, more than 50% of the articular surface they spoke about it. Yes, sir. So that paper was totally controversial with all other papers. In what way it was controversial? That's what I want to know. Did you read the paper? Yes, sir. I read the paper. So what, so what was the controversy on that? Sir, they... Was, uh, that even the less than 50% involvement of the joint surface, were they still doing well or they were not doing well? Sir, they, to, they were taking one by third. All rest were taking 50%. Okay. Yes. And then? They, then they showed the results were, uh, were not different. They were uh, equal. The change, were, change in result was non-significant. So it doesn't matter if it is less than one third or more than one third, the results are the same. Is that what you're saying? Yes, sir. Sir, they, they are saying uh, in some patients, they, they did foot reconstruction and in some patients, uh, they did only resection and the results were equivalent. Okay. Anyway, coming back to my question, 25-year-old with a subtalar coalition. What Sir, firstly, uh, I will give some cushion for uh, cushion. Yeah, uh, conservative the, uh, field. Conservative yes, evidence of field. Sir, I will get... Uh, MRI done to see stress reaction, any stress reaction or concurrent lesions. Okay, so sir, it's only a subtalar. Sir, yes, sir. So then I will see if there is uh, how much is the middle. Hindfoot valgus, valgus, valgus are around 14 degrees and a pest planus, which is partially correctable. Uh, 14 degrees, sir. Hindfoot pelvis? Yes. Sir, then I will do resection. And that's it, only and resection. Sir, resection and interpositioning of the graph. Okay. okay. That's all. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Okay. Uh, Abhishek, you are around. Okay. By the time Abhishek is there, uh, let me ask a simple question to. Uh, yeah, Abhishek, would you like to ask or shall I continue? Uh, please continue, sir. I'll, I'll come back. I'll come back after you. Yeah, okay. Uh, Shinam, uh, you have done a wonderful research, uh, the review of literature. Uh, tell me, what are the gray zones where there is not clarity about the uh, decision making or the treatment? Uh, sir, I think it, would, it should be symptomatic rather than a particular uh, degree. It, if it is more than 16 degree or less than 16 degree. Okay. No. So the question is about uh, the literature is not giving us a clarity. So what are those areas where literature is not giving us real good guidance? And if you have to carry out a research, you would carry out research in that area. Sir, I, I will do this and I will see uh, 
I will see. I will do gait analysis, or I will see weight uh, uh, abnormal joint forces if if there are uh, on any joint, and then I will do on in the second stage. I will do calcaneal lengthening osteotomy. Right. Yeah. Thank you, Abhishek. Please. First, I will see. Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, uh, hi, Dr. Bansal Abhishekini. So I have two questions for you. Not questions. Okay, I can say questions. For me, a BOS rising star is going to be a doctor who's going to be extremely good communicator with his patients. So for me, if this patient that Dr. Pradeep just mentioned, 25-year-old female who comes to you with a talocalcaneal collision and this, how will you counsel him or how will you counsel her her apprehensive parents who are looking for a potential groom for her and what all things will be there how will you counsel this patient about everything right from conservative so what will be your steps of counseling because that's very important mode of communication how will you do that imagine that me and pradeep are her relatives and you are going to explain things to us. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, I I will uh, uh, tell them everything that uh, if there if we no no if we I'm don't sorry correct, I'm then... sorry to interrupt. Imagine we are relatives. We have come with our daughter with a calcaneal coalition, talocalcaneal coalition. Now talk as if you are talking to a relative. You are. A consultant orthopedic surgeon, pediatric orthopedic consultant surgeon, talk to us as a as we are her relatives. Show us your communication skills. Uh, I will show uh, what may be the consequences of getting it treated and what may be the consequences of getting it not treated with the example of my previous patients. Uh, which uh, then I will show them how uh, it may get. Uh, it may get affect your uh, all the joint forces uh, later on. Okay, okay, we got your answer. We noted it. We'll keep it in mind. Second question is little technical, especially since you are a pediatric orthopedic surgeon. You described or you quoted Mosca's paper on talocalcaneal coalition. Uh, yes, sir. How does Mosca's osteotomy change in a talocalcaneal coalition you know Mosca's osteotomy right yes sir yes sir tell me in will yes, it sir, work it in a talocalcaneal coalition he has described it but he's described it with certain principles can you tell me that sir it will change the uh, column of uh, lateral column and uh, it will change the joint reaction forces no, no, That's I understand. That is what is it is for. Where will you start? Where will you end the osteotomy in a talocalcaneal coalition with service a flexible flat foot? Or you uh, do the sir, same? Uh, I will do. Sir, I, uh, for the osteotomy, I will give a uh, lateral column lengthening with the oliers in season and. Uh, for calcaneum lengthening osteotomy, sir, or resection. Where will you direct your osteotomy in a talocalcaneal coalition? Mm -hmm. Will it be the same osteotomy as a flexible osteotomy? Okay, no worries. Read about it. Thank you. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, there, sir, any questions from you? No, no, no. Okay. Okay, so thank you, Sheenam, and thank you, judges. Let's move on to the next contestant, Dr. Pulkit. Please share your presentation, Pulkit. Uh, so again, the time will be same, eight-minute presentation, and then followed by questions. Pulkit, we can't see your presentation shared. Also, unmute yourself. Yeah, now it is sharing. Am I audible, sir? Yeah, you're audible now. So your presentation came online. Go full screen. Uh, good evening. Uh, wait, my wait. Talk. It's not yet full screen. Yeah. 
Is it full screen, sir? No, it is not. Um, can you stop sharing and share again? He's frozen again. No, no, he's there. Sir, uh, my screen is full screen, sir. So. No, but you have to start share screen again. Your screen share has gone down. Right, sir. I'll dive it. Oh, he's stuck again. You saw his PowerPoint version, it was 2007. Mm -hmm. This is 23, the year 23. Is it okay, uh, let's do one thing. Let's do, okay, don't worry. You just go ahead with your thing. Uh, we will try to understand your slides without uh, the slides. So don't, don't waste time. Just please go right, ahead. Right. Uh, good evening. Uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity to present on the uh, BOS Rising Star. Uh, my topic, uh, which I've been uh, management of calcaneal fractures, a review of surgical approaches. So the calcaneum is the largest charcoal bone and the optimal management for calcaneum fractures is highly debated till day. And uh, it is as late as 2018 where uh, calcaneal fractures should we or should we not operate was published in Indian Journal of Orthopedics by Dr. Remar. And uh, the goal of operative treatment is anatomical reduction in stable fixation, restore the subtalar joint and maintain the normal width of the calcaneum. The methodology which I have used, the keywords uh, calcaneum fractures, the extensor lateral approach, sinus tarsi approach and minimal incision techniques for calcaneum fractures. The databases which I have searched for word studies and randomized control uh, trials and meta-analysis are PubMed, Google Scholar, Cochrane Library for uh, control trials and Medline. My objective of review is to compare the function. He's offline. Yeah, probably we lost him. Uh, the problem is with the yeah. net connection. What shall we do? Shall we wait for that or? We'll just wait a minute. Let him join by. Just uh, while we are there, um, when we are doing the presentations, whoever, when they do the introduction, their name, the institute, place, they don't mention that or is that purposely not put in? No, it's not put in. Just the title and the name. No, but nobody, okay. no, nobody restricts them for that. Some people so do. It. So it's Sorry. not all the time like some people put, but uh, some people mention that uh, where they are. Some people may not. Yeah. So, so no, my question no. was in the, as a rising star, there's the presentation. Are they told specifically not to put in or no, no, it's, no, open no, it's their discretion? We have given them a lot of guidelines like how what laptop to use. We have even sent them Dr. Dhiran Ganjwala's lecture of Iro Global. Still, nobody they are doing like this. He is using 2007 PowerPoint in 23. This is we are live, huh? yes, I know, but I have to tell <laughs> for the audience. <laughs> At least for the next presenter, if they um, like hear that, then at least they will be prepared. Hmm. Hmm. It's like in phones, two generation back, nobody supports, neither Android nor Apple. That's what it should be. Anyway. Let me call him up and see what's the problem.
Third one there, Dr. Chandan or no? He's not there. No, he's not there. So this is the last yes, one. Yes. Okay. See, if we really want to give him an opportunity, what we can do is like he can record his presentation and then share with us uh, like uh, by tomorrow morning and then we will score. But uh, yes, we will not be able to uh, score question. how he how he answers the question because that's the most important part. Exactly. It's also the other thing is it's always the live presentation or in the front of a crowd when you're presenting it. That's how you are, how's your body language, I think makes a big difference. Yeah, fortunately, he's here. With the, yeah, he's here. Pulkit is here. Good. Go ahead, Pulkit. Can you share? Or no, you don't, we don't share have your on. audio. He's on the mobile. And his audio is not connected. Use Wi Fi or cellular. Huh? Now it's connected. Yeah, now it's getting connected. Okay. Go ahead, Pulkit. Speak. Yes, sir. Uh, sincere apology, sir. I changed the laptop. It had old PowerPoint and there's some net issues. Uh, should I restart my talk, yeah, sir? Yeah, please, please. Yeah. Uh, good evening. Uh, my topic for uh, today's presentation is management of calcaneal fractures, a review of surgical approaches. I would like to thank Bombay or orthopedic society for giving me this opportunity. The calcaneum is the largest tarsal bone. It is the commonest tarsal bone to get fractured. The optimal surgical approach and the management of calcaneal fractures is debated till date. It is as late as 2018 where in Indian Journal of Orthopedics, a topic titled calcaneal fractures should be or should we not operate was published by Dr. Remel and uh, the goal of operative treatment is <clears throat> anatomical reduction and stable fixation to restore the subtalar joint and maintain the normal width of calcaneum. The methodology is the keywords which I've used is calcaneum fractures, extensile lateral approach, sinus tarsi approach, and the databases which I've searched for the RCTs and the cohort studies are PubMed, Google Scholar, Cochrane Library, and Medline. My objective of review is to compare the functional outcome and complications using different surgical approaches to manage the calcaneum fractures to provide valuable insights in choosing the surgical approach for improved patient outcome and patient care. The classification that has been traditionally used for calcaneum fractures are the SX lopricity classification depending on the secondary fracture line divided into tongue type and joint depression type and a CT-based classification, which was given by Roy Sanders, which is applicable till date. The two important angles that are considered in calcaneum fractures are the joint to tuber angle or the bowler's angle and the crucial angle of Gisney. The timing of surgery is very relevant in calcaneum fractures because it is not just the bone that is fractured, it is the injury to the soft tissue, the condition of the soft tissues that plays an important role in timing of the surgery. The presence of wrinkle sign is an optimal indicator for the surgery. The two most important approaches that are being used are the sinus tarsi approach and the extensile lateral approach. The condition of the soft tissues favors the sinus tarsi approach and the extensile lateral approach uh, takes place in the watershed zone after which the subperiosteal flap is raised, the reduction is achieved, and then plate fixation is done. The condition of the wound healing is an important complication with an extensive lateral approach, and hence the timing of surgery is very important in cases of calcaneum fractures. There were many studies that have compared these two surgical approaches, various meta-analysis studies, uh, Chinese uh, uh, study done in the year 2018 published in the BMC musculoskeletal disorders 
compared the sinus tarsi in the extensile lateral approach they concluded that the restoration of bowler's angle and the functional outcomes were similar with both the approaches but the most important point that needs to be taken into consideration is the wound complications that were about four times more with an extensile lateral approach and cases of sural nerve injury were reported much more with extensile lateral approach another british study that was done that compared uh, both the approaches uh, concluded the same thing that it uh, the sinus tarsi approach reduces the problem with wound healing but also achieves nearly the same adequate restoration of the displaced intraarticular fractures of the calcaneum as compared to the extensile lateral approach there were other techniques that were used for example in managing a, in the stage calcaneum fractures for a medial external fixation to restore the calcaneal height and then putting an external fixator and then managing it in a definitive way there was another uh, comparison done uh, with an uh, by mehta et al in which extensile lateral approach and sinus tarsi approach were com com uh, so combined with medial distraction technique for intraarticular calcaneal fractures they concluded that the sinus tarsi approach combined with the medial distraction technique is a reliable treatment for type 2 and type 3 sanders and it restores the bowler's angle as compared to the extensile lateral approach to conclude the most important part for calcaneal fractures is a thorough history taking that involves the patient's uh, immunological status whether the patient is diabetic or non diabetic whether the patient is on steroids whether the patient needs to be managed surgically and in what intervention the role of experienced surgeons in managing surgically with an extensile lateral approach has far lesser complications as evident from a study by fisher et al published in 2020 in jbgs the displaced intraarticular fractures need to be treated to restore the calcaneal height width and maintain the congruity the non operative treatment of severely displaced fractures or failure to achieve the anatomical reduction results in painful mal union with rapidly evolving subtalar arthritis thank you thank you dr pulkit and uh, i'll invite the judges for questions dr pradeep you are here Yeah, fine. Let me start with that. By that time, yeah. Pradeep and Abhishek can join. Yeah, Pulkit, uh, a good presentation. Uh, the question is like uh, you have given us a lot of information, but probably all information we are aware of. So, would you like to tell us something where uh, really the next research should proceed? Uh, because you have read the literature. So, what do you think where one should really focus or try to answer that question? sir so all the meta analysis randomized control trial scored studies point to the thing that sinus if the patient is amenable for surgery and patient is fit for surgery then sinus tarsi approach has far lesser wound complications as compared to extensile lateral approach and all the studies they point out to the same thing that sinus tarsi approach irrespective of the condition of the soft tissues has a better Uh, least complication rate as compared to extensile lateral and uh, another study uh, which was published showed a uh, extensile lateral approach in the hands of experienced surgeons as lesser complication rates so no no these all things are like uh, are clear so yes, what are the gray zone the gray zone is uh, in with respect to the soft tissue sir and in sanders to where whether to operate or not to operate an article published by dr remel in uh, indian journal of orthopedics in 2018 highlighted the very same thing that in cases of minimally displaced less than 2 mm step of fractures can be conservatively treated and the functional outcomes are similar so we need to be very careful as to what uh, what extent we need to go for surgical intervention and we can get away with conservative management because the complications the risk outweigh the benefits in those cases sir 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pulvit. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Abhishek or Pradeep who is online. Okay, uh, Pulkit, good presentation. Uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, Thank you. Uh, like, good uh, control over the talk, at least, even though we didn't have the visuals, but I think we could understand what you were trying to put forward. That's very important. Uh, my question to you will be uh, two different things, you know, again, one, someone who is minimally displaced, who doesn't need a surgery, uh, like as per your criteria, doesn't need a fixation <laughs> as per the books, has come to you saying that he wants a surgery. How will you counseling counsel him the pros and cons of surgery versus conservative? And someone who is like grossly displaced, like a Sanders 4, how will you counsel him for an ORIF versus fusion versus non-operative treatment? So two case scenarios for you. How will you explain the patients? So the first uh, case scenario in which uh, I need to explain the patient that uh, if the patient has a minimally displaced fracture, I would explain that the uh, patient will be uh, having even after a surgery a prolonged period of immobilization. I won't allow the patient to immediately weight bear on it. So I would explain the patient that the pros for the surgery and is would be to delay the arthritic changes, the pain, the malunion. The cons would be I would. Uh, suggests that since the patient will have a prolonged period of immobilization in both the scenarios, I would explain the patient that the risks are much more with surgery in such type of fractures and hence can go with conservative management. The second scenario, which is a higher grade of Sanders, Sanders 4, patient might require two times surgery if i fix and then patient ultimately with the advent of arthritis might require a fusion so i would explain the patient that uh, in such cases with a higher grade the patient will have changes the condition of joint is not good the fracture is severe extensive and patient might require fusion at a later date so I would avoid operating such cases a couple of times with the complications that involve my wound healing problems, the other comorbidities that, that the patient might have, might have a history of steroid intake that will delay the wound healing. So I would counsel the patient to go for fusion rather than fixation and then later on converting it into fusion because the patient still has symptoms of the fracture. Okay. Uh, thanks, Pulkit. Um, so for you and Chinam both, actually uh, these questions which were directed were uh, for us as judges, two faceted. Means one, we could judge your communication skill, how you talk to patient because that's very important as part of surgeons, you guys are coming into uh, like, you know, coming into proper practice very soon or rather you guys must be in practice very well. And it also question case scenarios would give us an idea of how you would tackle or other your uh, grasp of the knowledge of what things are and how things are. Good. Uh, both of you guys keep it up. Uh, keep rising, I would say. And uh, stay interested in foot and ankle. It's very good. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks, Abhijay. Pradeep, sir, you're there? Yeah, I'm here. Yes, sir. Go ahead, sir. So, um, I think good recovery by Pulkit, I would say, in spite of no presentation, I think the message was quite, and actually your research and the whole uh, meta-analysis, I would say, was quite good. Okay, just quick question, Pulkit. If you had a Sanders 3, what would you do? Or what would you have it done? 
sir uh, i would get it operated sir okay so what approach sir uh, uh, as soon as wrinkle sign appears and i am fit for surgery the right time i would prefer a sinus tarsi approach okay uh and uh, i would go ahead with the surgery okay uh, what are the problems you read the literature is a sinus tarsi approach good for a sinus 3 uh, or is there sir, something else sir uh, sinus tarsi approach with a combination of distraction technique or a staged uh, procedures they have a better functional outcome in sanders 3 okay though the visualization is less as compared to the extensive lateral approach yeah but the combination of a sinus tarsi approach and a medial distraction technique can help in getting the functional outcome as par with the extensive lateral approach sir okay if you look at the uh, literature what is the incidence or of Sural nerve injuries of sinus tarsi versus extensor lateral approach. Uh, my uh, first article, sir, uh, it was a Chinese article and a meta-analysis study done that included about seven RCTs that showed that the sural nerve injury with extensor lateral approach is about four times more than the sinus tarsi approach. I disagree on that because I think the sural nerve injury. is more in the sinus tarsi because your branch straight away comes into the sinus tarsi sinus tarsi approach yes. and that's why there is bishe kanas we would not we clearly know that operative works much better in a group of displaced intraarticular fractures yes sir okay. anyway yes, sir. that's all thank you sir thank you sir uh, there sir any questions from your side um Uh, to, uh, to Pulkit, uh, good presentation. Although you couldn't see your slides, thank you. In sir. the literature, could you find anything regarding grafting in these fractures? Sorry, sir. In, from the literature, could you find any uh, reference to grafting in these fractures? Uh, no, sir. I didn't come across. Items where these are the mentioned that these parameters need to be restored. So that is very essential. so that was the main parameters or the main points that were considered over the conservative management okay yeah thank you okay. thank you sir thank you pulkit and uh, thank you sir thank you both contestants and both judges dr pradeep sir and abhishek and dr dheeran sir over to uh, dar sir to close the session and also invite everybody for wirock thank you ashok thank you very much um uh, thanks uh, pradeep and uh, abhishek and dr dheeran for being there as judges although we had three uh, initially three contestants but one of them has not logged in in spite of the reminder uh, i thank you once again for being there and thanks the two candidates for excellent presentations uh and uh, i invite you both i'm sure pradeep and abhishek will be there and dr green will be there for the wirock and i invite you both as well i hope you are there as a contestant as well uh let's see the results later so thank you very much everyone for being there so we have a short mm -hmm. wirock video and i'll just play it uh, ending the session
Thank you again, everybody. And we end this session now. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ashok. Sorry, I just keeping logging and logging out. Thank you very much, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank Have you a good day. Bye. Bye, sir. Bye-bye. I've sent you the